Good evening. Welcome to Washington. I'm Brett Baer. Congress is emphatic tonight. Members of both parties in both chambers have overwhelmingly rejected the president's veto, president's veto of a bill allowing 9-11 victims' families to sue Saudi Arabia over its alleged involvement supporting the terrorist attacks. It's the first time since the president took office that Congress has overridden his veto, and tonight, President Obama is reacting. Correspondent Doug McKelway is on Capitol Hill tonight with details. Good evening, Doug. Evening, Brett. In a Congress which is paralyzed so often, this 97 to 1 tally on the Senate side and a nearly similar vote on the House side was a sign of near unanimity and a stinging rebuke of the president's opposition to the 9 11 bill. It was also the first override of a presidential veto in the history of the Obama administration, but it comes with some severe potential repercussions. When weighed against the moral imperative, we have to do right by the families of the 9-11 victims. The choice is clear. I urge my colleagues to override. It was the rarest of circumstances. Liberal New York Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer imploring his colleagues to override President Obama's veto of JASTA. The bill gives the families of 9-11 victims the right to sue foreign governments if a court finds the government to be complicit in a terrorist attack in the U.S. Despite the one-sided vote tally, some senators were torn between empathy for 9-11 families and how JASTA could damage a cornerstone of diplomacy, sovereign immunity. I'm going to support passage of this legislation today, but I do so understanding that there could be, in fact, unintended consequences that work against our national interest. The White House had unleashed its heavy hitters to warn about JASTA. Defense Chief Ash Carter wrote it could lead to, quote, an intrusive discovery process which might threaten military secrets. CIA Director John Brennan spoke moments before the House voted on the override. Piercing the concept of sovereign immunity, which has really undergirded international relations for centuries, I think is a very, very dangerous slippery slope. His warning didn't work. All of the president's objections I believe were addressed, uh, changes were made, and this bill is not going to put American soldiers at risk, it's not going to put American diplomats at, uh, at risk. Late this afternoon a stung President Obama reacted to the override. It's a dangerous precedent and it's an example of why sometimes you have to do what's hard. And frankly I wish Congress here had done what's hard. So far silent is Saudi Arabia, the country most likely to be singled out for lawsuits by 9-11 families. 15 of the 19 9-11 hijackers were Saudis. And formerly unreleased pages from the 9-11 Commission report suggest to some that a Saudi connection to 9-11 should be further probed in a court of law. Publicly, the Saudis have kept a very low profile in all this, saying this as a U.S. domestic issue with which they should not interfere. But privately, Brett, they've got to be seething. They see themselves as a loyal ally in the war on terror, which has shared intelligence with the U.S. that has helped to disrupt the terrorism plots. Brett? Doug, another development. It looks like the prospect of a government shutdown has been averted. Uh, Congress will likely reach, we understand, an agreement tonight on a continuing resolution to fund the government through December 9th. So, what changed so quickly? I mean, it was just 24 hours ago, the specter of this shutdown was looming large. That's right, and, and that happened because uh, House Democrats suddenly wanted to include $170 million in funding for uh, the Flint, Michigan water crisis in the continuing resolution. The trouble was that the Senate had already passed a separate bill, a water resources bill, which included that money, and that the House water resources bill did not include that money. Well, late today, the House leadership assured uh, House Democrats that they will include that $170 million in the water resources bill. The debate will happen late tonight, 10, 11 o'clock p.m. The details will be worked out in conference committee in the lame duck session. That money will be provided by the end of this year. Everybody's happy. Everybody gets to get out of here late tonight and go home to campaign for the November 8th elections. Right. Until the next fiscal cliff. <laughs> Doug, uh, so true. live on Capitol Hill. Doug, thank you. Yeah.